I started in, uh, the water jet industry back in about 1980, actually in 1980. And uh, at that point in time, the industry used almost exclusively uh, synthetic jewels for uh, the orifices, and they're made of sapphire. And uh, the trouble with sapphire at that time, and as well as today, is that it's not a very robust material. And that is, uh, uh, for the machine shops that are trying to maintain the greatest mean time between failure of their systems cutting, uh, they need a material in the orifice that will withstand all of the impurities in the water and uh, all of the bombardment from the, the, the different uh, components that, that come down the high pressure tube uh, that just are generated from the intensifiers, the direct drive units, and uh, also today of the uh, abrasive media that comes down and knocks these orifices out. Uh, sapphire is a very hard material. As a matter of fact, it's number nine on the Mohs scale and diamond is number ten. But the disparity between 9 and 10 is actually greater than the disparity between 1 and 9. So 1 being talcum powder and 9 being sapphire. Sapphire is a very hard material, but it's also very brittle. And when it uh, gets impacted by any foreign matter in the system, it tends to knock off uh, the edge of the actual orifice. And when that happens, your jet stream uh, deteriorates to the extent that you're going to lose your cut. Now, the trouble with sapphire is that you can get a good one if, if everything is just right, that'll last you uh, 100, 200 hours tops, but you can also get one that lasts a microsecond. And it all has to do with the, the environment, how clean things are, and just oftentimes just luck with a drop. And uh, so the industry in the beginning needed something other than sapphire if we're going to progress our industry, if we're going to be able to compete better with the other uh, uh, methods of cutting. I mean, the water jet industry has to compete against lasers and plasma and a variety of different ways to cut things. And uh, the best way to do that is to ensure that we have a long life orifice. It's been typically the proverbial weak link in the ultra high pressure water jet system because anything was subject to knocking the orifice out. And only with the diamond now, uh, we can develop that edge and the inlet geometry on the orifice to withstand virtually any component which comes down through the, uh, through the water jets. If the diamond is machined properly, if you stress relieve the diamond, if you uh, eliminate all the stress risers from the way it's put together, it's not uncommon to get life, lifetimes in the thousands of hours, even in the, today's uh, abrasive environment, which is extremely hazardous to the orifice. One of the things people don't know about uh, water jet cutting is every time you have an on-off cycle with your water jet stream, the same vacuum that pulls in the abrasive and the cutting head uh, will also pull things up through the jet stream when you turn the valve off. So nature abhors a vacuum. So what happens is whatever you're cutting or wherever is in the ambient area directly beneath the jet stream or directly beneath the diamond or sapphire, it gets sucked up and then blown back through as soon as you fire the, the machine on again. Only the diamond will be able to withstand the perpetual bombardment of the garnet particles and actually even of aluminum oxide. And so the diamond basically gives you uh, the confidence that you can run a very expensive uh, component if you're cutting a, an F-16 wing panel on a titanium that's worth a lot of money, you can have confidence that when you start the project with a diamond, you're going to finish with that same uh, orifice. It's not just the diamond. It's the type of diamond that you use. It's the way you orient the diamond. And uh, it's the hardness of the diamond. The diamond is an extremely hard. There's nothing harder in the world today than diamond. And if you orient the diamond right and put the right Miller index up facing the, the, the water as it comes down the stream to that water, you're going to have a, a, an edge that can withstand uh, the ab abrasion resistance that you're getting in the jet stream. The jet stream, I, from what I understand, travels at up to Mach 3, three times the speed of sound as it exits the orifice itself. And every time you cycle the, your system on and off, the diamond has to impact or undergo an impact from 0 to 55,000 psi. And now it's being utilized in pressures up to 87,000 psi. Who knows what it's going to be in the future. But the bottom line is the only known substance today that will withstand that consistently is diamond. We take a diamond typically of a dodecahedron shape, 12 sides, and uh, we only select diamonds of the absolute highest quality. Typically a diamond that we use here is of has fewer flaws, fewer imperfections than you would have on the equivalent size of a gemstone quality diamond. Because the diamond itself has to undergo these extreme pressures and this tough environment, 
we absolutely have to have a diamond which is free of uh, feathers and flaws and fractures and so forth. So we start off with a diamond that's extremely high quality. And today, uh, a lot of the diamonds that we manufacture are used to cut the uh, armor plating for the striker vehicles in Iraq. And we're extremely proud of the fact that we're helping that, that case out. Oftentimes, find the headliners, the suit backs, uh, trunk liners, uh, door panels. A lot of those are cut with water to systems. I think virtually every headliner in the country, and virtually all the factories that have been through headliners, are today cut with the water jet system. And most of those are actually cut with the diamond technology for it. The diamond itself adds another element to the water jet cutting system because you have a much greater mean time between failure and it ultimately allows us to be more competitive with the, the competing industries such as laser. And of course, when you cut with a water jet, you have no heat effect at all. You don't have to worry about toxic fumes and so forth. And now today with the, the uh, Increases in uh, design ability, or the, the actual advances we made in the abrasive cutting head. We can cut a lot of thicker materials, and we're now competing on the thinner materials, again, because of the diamond. Uh, previously, we, we couldn't compete with the laser. So even on the thinner materials now, we're, we're competing quite a bit better because the cutting speeds have increased. The return on investment is much greater with the diamond than with the sapphire. If you've got a water jet job strap and you're quoting a, a, a certain cut for a given dollar amount per hour, and you have to shut down even for 10 or 15 minutes to replace the sapphire, or you could have been cutting with the diamond. The fact is a diamond will outlast sapphires by, you know, easily a factor of 20 to 1 under the right circumstances. Return on investment is certainly higher with the diamond. The ID is actually a KMT product, H2O jet product, and we uh, mount every single diamond in those products and verify that it's aligned. And that is the key aspect of the integral diamond eductor. And that is that the diamond, once it's put into the cutting head, it is an integral component of it and can never be out of alignment. With every other system out there, you have to replace the complete orifice assembly. And this just adds the stack up error. Whenever you have the stack up errors between a mount and a seat and then a mixing tube, uh, you're not going to get all of the energy directed to the cutting part. So. Yeah, the IDE is ultimately uh, extremely user-friendly because once you put it on, you can pretty much forget it. It'll just run. The bottom line is, is that we, we at ETI absolutely make the finest diamond nozzle in the world. Uh, when you compare the, the craftsmanship that goes into our product with anyone else's out there, and of course there aren't that many, um, if you look at them under a microscope, it's black and white, it's night and day. There's no other orifice which is stress relief which is, has all of the stress risers uh, reduced from the orifice itself. So once it goes into the actual cutting head that you're using, you can expect that it's going to last generally for as long as whatever it is that's enveloping the diamond. The diamond will be the last thing that fails. Everything around it will disintegrate, but that diamond is going to stay there for just about ever.